Hi all, we're going to have a look now at Kasparov vs Baryev, played in the Lenaris 1993 tournament in round 5. So this was Kasparov's second decisive game, where he won. So he played e4, showing his diverse opening repertoire, being able to play d4 and e4 very fluently. His opponent played e5 now. And now Kasparov played a little surprise move already, he played bishop c4, so instead of the, the main line knight f3, um, this could transpose into the Giriko piano. Um, actually, after knight f6, he played d3, and black played now c6. So with the possible idea of later playing d5 to gain a tempo on that bishop on c4. Kasparov played knight f3, and after d5, he simply retreated his bishop. So he didn't want to take on d5, and he's playing a temporary pawn sack. If black dared to take this pawn now, let's have a quick look at that. d takes e4, just knight g5, so hitting the f7 e4 pawn. And it's difficult actually for black to defend that sensitive f7 square. So this, this would be quite unpleasant. Rivka gives, for example, bishop e6, knight takes e6, fe, and you see now these trebled pawns. And now here, according to Rivka, the strongest move is not to take there, because that would allow queen takes d1 check, presumably, and um, black would have great, com great, great play. But in fact, maybe just knight c3 here, or bishop takes e6 with, with a slight advantage. So anyway, after bishop b3, black played a5, further trying to harass this bishop, so the immediate threat's a4, trapping that bishop. Kasparov now played knight c3, which defends that a4 square, and now Beriev just pinned that knight, so he's renewing this threat, and also threatening to structurally damage white. Um, and after a3, Kasparov is prepared to lose a tempo, uh, inviting this structural damage, and... It's, it's a very dynamic situation now, where black has the better pawn structure, but white has the two bishops. So after knight d7, Kasparov opens up the position a little, little bit with this e takes d5, and he's now got this e5 pawn as a source of attack later. After knight takes d5, he just simply castles, not concerned about his c3 pawn. I believe that would be immune. Let's have a quick look. Knight takes c3. According to Ribka, queen e1 would be strong here, so targeting the c3 and e5 pawns and just if knight d5 not immediately knight takes e5 but maybe even stronger is just d4 here so that will be with a slight advantage to white so after castles um, black castled and after rook e1 you know white's already put putting black under pressure now in compensation for his doubled pawns after rook e8, Kasparov played c4, so he's seemingly hemming in this, this light square bishop even more. And after knight e7, he now plays knight g5. So why not? The knight can um, come to e4 potentially, and also the queen's now threatening to come to h5, with menacing threats on f7 and h7. So Barry have just chased that knight immediately, and after knight e4, a4 was played, so the bishop has to go back. So this bishop seemingly being uh, very blocked in now on a2. So Kasparov now after c5 um, has to have a plan to get this bishop out, especially as barriers blocking in even this pawn now, blockading with that c5. First Kasparov plays knight d6, and after rook f8 plays c3. So now we see this potential plan, this bishop rerouting on this dangerous diagonal, especially if d4 can be later played, and maybe even queen d3. So after knight g6, Kasparov played bishop b1, so we see that bishop being rerouted. And after knight f6, now this knight has to do something. Kasparov grabbed the two bishops, so we have here a classic position with these two bishops against these two knights. So um, here, queen f3 was played. So the queen's uh, quite dangerous, because in some variations it's threatening bishop takes h6, followed by queen takes f6. However, that's not a threat at the moment. Baryev didn't have to play uh, what he did play. Well, he played rook e8, not worrying about it here, because of the same reason. Knight h4 would have been playable. So say after bishop c2, um, instead of Kasparov playing bishop c2, say he tried to nab this pawn. Just quickly show this variation. So just um, knight h4 is actually winning a piece for black. Because now the queen moves, and even though it's threatening um, mate and the knight, the knight comes to f5, double attacking the queen. 
and the bishop, and also defending the mate threat. Queen takes g7. So black black will be winning a piece there. So um, so bishop c2 was played by Kasparov. So that's that's sort of tying down the rook at the moment to defend that pawn. After knight h4, Kasparov played queen g3. And it's kind of a surprising move here, g5. It's tempting white to just rip open the position. You know, this, these are creating weaknesses now, this pawn move around black's king. So Kasparov played d4, so he's opening up the position for his two bishops. Not minding about material loss, for example, cd and queen takes c4. Barry played knight f5, and Kasparov played queen h3, and now possibly strongest was g4, and that's a big recommendation. For example, g4, queen d3, e4, queen d1, and now just c takes d4 might have been good, with queen takes c4. Bishop b2, and, and Rivka likes black's position very much here. But this wasn't played. Instead of g4 here, e4 was played. And this allowed Kasparov to open up the position, temporarily sacking a pawn, you know, so f3, ripping open the position. After e takes f3, rook takes e8 check, queen takes e8, and now black's threatening this mating one with queen e1 check. So otherwise, you know, white will be able to take that knight. So Kasparov defends his e1 by doing this bishop takes g5, so he's defending with the rook. And after hg, queen takes f5. The threats are really mounting now on black's king. But there is this um, check Kasparov factored in now, followed by another check. But this has been calculated as being harmless for White, this position. And here, Baryev, you know, he's under great pressure here, and he blunders horribly. Um, Ribka thinks just repeat the position with Queen E3 check, for example. Um, and followed by actually Rook A6 to try and defend this position. So, for example, Queen E3 check. King h1, rook a6 might have been a viable defence, but white's slightly better here, according to Ripper, but the evaluation is not so clear. Instead, this is a, um, a terrible blunder, knight g4, because it allows queen h7 check, defending the h2 pawn, and after king f8, rook f1, and black is in serious trouble now. He played f6, um, and after bishop g6, faced with this mate, you know, uh, he resigns. But if we have a look at queen takes c4, which actually defends that mate, the problem here is this rook blasting down the f-file on that pawn. So here, either h3 or bishop h5 will be very dangerous because there's no real reply to this. Say queen g8, just queen takes b7 even is, is crushing. This knight can't move, so this would be the end of the game. Earlier, instead of this bishop, um, instead of this f6, Rivka had here, also this this was a terrible position, Let, let's say queen takes c4 immediately, then um, queen h8 check, king e7, and Rivka thinks rook e1 check, and this is crushing. Well, this rook is in pre at the moment, so, but if, say, king d7, there's just queen takes a8 is safe to play, so with massive advantage. So a very exciting game, very crushing final end to that. Um, more resistance could have been put up with just queen e3 check here. But still, um, Ribka kind of liked it for white by this stage. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.